right, yeah, baby, we are back in the saddle again. My best Steven Tyler there. I'm Brian, a private pilot based in northern Indiana. 18 months ago, I took my 1979 Piper Cherokee 6 in for its annual inspection, and it never came back. <laughs> Hell, it took so long, the name of the damn company changed. First, we discovered cracks too big to ignore under the right wing walk area. So off it went to Airframe Components in Kendallville, Indiana. They specialize in rebuilding wings of all types. It's pretty much all they do. Two days later, we discovered a three inch crack in our crankcase, extending through one of the bolt holes, holding on the number two cylinder. At this point, we threw in the towel on our 32 year old engine and ordered a new one from Lycoming. Oh, this is it. Just fly the airplane. That's why we're here. We rebuilt the airplane with all new components Firewall 4, including the wiring, cables, and hoses. We overhauled the prop, and then we waited <laughs> and waited. Until finally, after numerous delays, our engine showed up in June. It's been installed and ground runs are complete. Now we just need to find someone crazy enough to take it for a test flight and break in the engine. Turns out there's a shh ton of paperwork to document all this work, cause the FAA and all that legal stuff. The best part is all the zeros in the logbook. Talk to me, Goose. We have to be able to prove the airplane is worthy and legal to operate. Arrow, cause all that FAA stuff. We have to show the crazy guy is safe and legal to fly an airplane. Cause, you know, all that FAA stuff. Full County Traffic Cherokee 8160 Alpha departing. 11 will be staying in the pattern, uh, climbing up to 3,000 feet in orbit. Going off of 11 due to the winds and also the uh, favorability on the abort. We've got nice green open fields out there to bail out into. Engine fire procedures have been reviewed. Top governor failure procedures have been reviewed. And we've got the POH here with the emergency section ready to go. We don't have 70 by halfway down the runway. We're aborting. If anything is abnormal or out of the green, we're aborting. Any weird sounds, any vibrations, anything that feels odd, we're aborting. 2600 RPM, full manifold pressure, good fuel flow, crosswind correction. 70, rotate. Green, green, good, good. Then we go 30 degrees here for that field just in case. We're still green, we're still green. Still under head temps look good. We could easily make that runway if we had to right now. Let's keep it that way. The purpose of today's flight is really a shakeout flight. We've had a lot of work done to this airplane. Essentially, we, we just now have signed off our annual and we're taking the plane for a test flight. The only difference is we have a brand new engine, all new components, firewall forward, new rib and a wing that's been off and now back on the plane and re-rigged. Prop has been overhauled. So lots of things to potentially go wrong. And if they're gonna go wrong, you look at the accident statistics for Lycoming IO540s. When things go wrong on overhauled or factory new engines, they go wrong pretty quickly in the first 10 hours of flight. And our goal today is really just to run the engine. We've been following Lycoming's break-in instructions. We're running at 75% power. We're keeping an eye on those CHTs, those cylinder head temperatures, thanks to our brand new JPI, and we've been monitoring those. The main purpose of that is to get the piston rings to seat, to get those cylinder walls smooth. You know, there's, there's machining marks in there. As, as much as they polish these cylinders, there's still microscopic machining lines that's causing friction. And, and roughness when those cylinders move up and down. So the idea is just to get this this uh, engine up to temperature, get it up to cruise power, leave it there for a while, and just fly circles here and allow the engine to work, allow those components to seat. What we don't want to do is run the engine hot. The HT is above 450, that's not good for the engine. And we also don't want to run it at low RPM and glaze the cylinders. You and I have all heard the stereotypes. Go fast and turn to the left. I'm gonna drive and I'm gonna go fast and I'm gonna turn to the left, Jim Jim. I'm not going to lie, I was pretty nervous this morning when I woke up, been thinking about this flight all day, I've been running through my head all the scenarios, every, every phase of the flight, what am I going to do if I have a problem? As I mentioned, I briefed and pretty much memorized all my emergency procedures last night for what I expected, potential problems today, you know, loss of engine power on takeoff, loss of engine power on cruise, an engine fire, a prop governor overspeed situation. Knew what my sight picture wanted to be, knew how I wanted to take off, knew where my outs were at the end of the runway when I was low and slow, if I had an engine problem. Okay! I may have just dated myself there, but man, who didn't love the little rascals growing up 
Everything's in the green, showing nominal values right where we should be. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with the way that the plane is, is performing. Pretty boring flight, huh? <laughs> Shame on you people that have tuned in to see me possibly crash my airplane. What kind of sick, twisted people are you? <laughs> All three of my family members have mentioned in the last 18 months, at one time or another, as we're sitting in our minivan driving somewhere, man, I really miss the airplane. <laughs>